you can see over here in the project browser that we're looking at the ground floor floor plan. And we've also got a 3D view open over here. As I'm making changes over here in the floor plan, you'll be able to see the walls and other things appearing over here. So we're going to put in the walls for the bathroom. To get the wall tool, you go right up here, click on wall, and now our cursor has changed to this crosshair, and that indicates that you're ready to start drawing your walls. Click once to indicate where you want to start, and then you click another time to indicate where you want to end. And you can see as you're moving your cursor around, you have this sort of outline of the wall that you want to place, and it shows you the length and the angle of the wall. We're going to go up here, and you'll also notice, of course, that walls chain together. The end of one becomes the beginning of the next. As I've drawn those four walls, you will see that they have appeared right over here. You can click on any wall that you've placed, and you'll notice a couple of things. You'll notice that there are these two dots on either end, and these actually you can click and drag them like so, and that will change how your the, the length of your wall. One other thing, like I said, you can change the length of your wall by dragging these handles on the end. You can also change the length of your wall by clicking up here and entering in a new value of 7 feet. However, bear in mind that if you do enter a value here, that is too short, say 5 feet, you'll get an indication from Revit that it can't keep these two walls that are highlighted joined together. Basically, that, that just means that you've changed the length of the wall such that the two walls that we're touching no longer touch, therefore can't be joined together. You can either hit Cancel to undo what you have just done, or you can press Unjoin, and that's the equivalent of saying OK. That will leave the walls as you have just changed them. Now we'll hit Cancel, let it go back to the way that it was. And there's also this symbol here, which is the facing indicator. This will be more important later on. For now, all you need to know is that this facing indicator indicates the exterior face of the wall. Always make sure that this is facing the exterior of your building when you're placing your walls. There are, of course, times when you might not want that to be the case, but for now, just have that be your rule of thumb, and it'll make your life easier later on. And there you have it.